Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Ives number FS544. This is what this is, FS544. It's a kickdown door holder. It's the four hole mount. There's really, when it comes to kickdown door holders, there's the original holders that would be a three hole mount, probably more common because uh, it's less expensive and then the three and then the four hole mount there's other types um, that are out there by import companies and whatnot but your Ives your Rockwoods your Trimco's your Burns um, these domestic manufacturers are going to have those two primary styles generally in either a three hole mount <clears throat> or a four hole mount the materials made available in inexpensive base materials and then in brass um, the inexpensive base materials can be aluminum, they can be die cast, iron, like this one. Iron simply makes it really heavy, um, which, you know, I don't know if really heavy is necessarily something that's uh, advantageous over an aluminum based material because what I find, the base material, you're not going to crack this material. But what I'll find is the linkage, this roll pin that's in here, or whatever is acting as the fulcrum by which to move this down, um, is what's going to fatigue, really. And then also, the spring that's on the backside, this horn that is here, is going to hit that flat spring to press it to a point where it stays up. So regardless of the base material, aluminum or cast iron or zinc I'm sure they're made of zinc as well I know that they're made of zinc versus brass you know you're either looking for a good one or you're looking for a cheap one the good ones still have their Achilles heel so to speak here and back here the good ones however are going to look really nice because you'll um, what can be done on such a piece of material made of solid brass is an architectural finish you want polished brass it's going to be exactly polished brass Solid brass base material, polished finish with a lacquer on it. You want true oil rub bronze? Well, you can't do that with die cast iron. So the point of the matter is, you know, that would be the advantage of the high quality base material. And they're noticeably more expensive. Double, triple the cost, depending on what you're looking at. But if you're looking for something inexpensive, that you're going to say to yourself, wow, that's a piece of hardware right there. This is going to be a great uh, option for you. Because it's cast iron, it's not going to give you an architectural finish, and this is just simply sprayed aluminum. Uh, because of the base material, you're only going to get sprayed finishes available, and that's going to be sprayed satin bronze, sprayed aluminum, sprayed dark bronze, sprayed satin brass, and then sprayed black. So you'll be able to get all those finishes. Four-hole version, a lot of people will associate that with a heavy-duty version. <clears throat> I don't know that that's necessarily true. But nonetheless, it has four holes. Let's go over some dimensional properties. And what we're really looking at here is the dimensional properties. So the FS floor stop, FS544, there is going to be a relationship of what type of undercut that this is going to work with. There's a link below this video to a document called Cut Sheet, where you can see the ideal dimension for the FS544 versus the FS555. The four version is really about a four inch size is what they're calling it, even though it's actually not quite four inch. From that cut sheet, you can see that they're kind of hoping you're gonna have about three and three quarter from the, from the axis of pivoting down to the bottom of the tip, or also known as the door, uh, pardon me, also known as the floor. If you need a little bit more room, you're gonna go with the FS555. Holding this constant from the bottom of the of the mount to the bottom of the floor tip, you're gonna see that you're gonna be reliably about two and five eighths of an inch. So if you're dealing with a standard undercut of three quarter inch, maybe even an atypical undercut where it's one inch or an inch and a quarter, this will work. Really what happens though is you'll notice on exterior commercial doors, well that door is gonna swing out and it's great. Typical three quarter inch undercut, nice margin between the bottom of the door and the threshold. But what does the concrete do? Well, it's supposed to be sloped away from your threshold, isn't it? You get out to 90 degree open, and all of a sudden, what's three quarter from the bottom of the door to the sill condition is now an inch and a half. Okay, 
that's where you're going to come up with possibly needing more length than this or the FS555. There is a manufacturer who makes some kickdown door bottoms that are like 6 inches, 12 inches long. Um, rare to need those, but same sort of concept. If you have a patio door on your house and you uh, second floor scenario, not necessarily second floor, but you know when you walk into the home at ground level and you go to the back of the house and now there's a balcony and it's 12 feet down, you know, <laughs> um, you're still on the ground level, I suppose, but that door is going to hit your sill and it's going to open up. Well, the distance from the bottom of the door to your wooden balcony or to, to the balcony structure, it could easily be eight inches. So that's where you could need something really long uh, and, and nothing Ives makes is going to hit that requirement. Now, the dimensional properties of the base, two and a quarter tall, okay, a little closer to about two and an eighth. Top of that plate, about a quarter inch to the first hole and about inch and seven eighths. Overall width, about an inch and a half. They're calling it out to be one and seven sixteenths. Yeah, sure. From the edge to the first hole, about five sixteenths, getting over to about an inch and three sixteenths. So you can do that center sort of math and determine if this is going to meet the requirements of your existing installation. Screws are going to be included. They look like a number six with an oval head, threaded to the head type screw. A wood screw. I'd call it a sheet metal screw myself. Oval head. The installation instructions on that cut sheet. Place door in a position at point where it is to be held open to overcome the difficulty of any uneven floors. You could have a highly polished floor and you have a door close around there. It's not unheard of that this can slip, but you generally don't run into that very often, but there are times that it does happen and you need to consider a different piece of hardware. Place the holder in the position as shown with the rubber shoe of holder resting flat on the floor approximately eight inch from the edge of the door um, over, and you can see where that's detailed. When you're installing a door holder, it should be it should have been stated immediately. Obviously, this is not a fire-rated door. It is a cardinal rule of fire-rated doors that they are to be self-closing at all times automatically. This does not, this violates that principle. It's one of the two cardinal rules of fire doors. The other being it must be self-latching. This, do not install this on a fire-rated door at all, period. You need to find a different way to hold the door open. We can help you with that. Uh, be mindful when you're installing it. You might have a kick plate, so you might end up finding out you have to drill through a little bit of stainless steel or brass to get to the door itself. Um, the construction of the door, etc. Eight inch is not necessarily is certainly not a rule. It's just a recommendation of what they're looking for. Um, I think eight inch is probably a, a, a confluence of not too far in and not too far out. Um, the forces acting on a door hold open point with a door closer installed would obviously be different if it's out at the bleeding edge of the door or over here in the center of the door. So 8 inch is probably what they found to be a good medium of where to install such a thing. Obviously keeping it out of contact with uh, other hardware that might be installed. Um, you know the projection of the frame. Mark your holes, pre-drill your holes and attach if door pivots are worn or have excessive play, install the holder so that the rubber shoe rests slightly on its heel. What they're saying is when you're in the installed position, heel it back like this um, because what they're saying is the door is going to settle, move a little bit. You do really want to get it installed so that it's not on the heel or not under the nose because you are going to prematurely wear this rubber bumper down. It will happen. Um, this rubber bumper is available as a standalone separate product. There is a link below this video to that item. Now that replacement rubber is called the part number FSPART.1074. There is a link below this video. I would suggest if you have any sort of volume on this door at all, like the front of a package service, um, think of think of your the biggest package carrier in the world um, if you have one of those you know packing pack and ship centers and that front door is open constantly or the back door I would immediately buy replacements of this material because rubber versus concrete it's just a matter of time then you're gonna start to grind this away and then it's really no longer effective I'd put a couple of those in your drawer and be able to replace them 
Simple little screw. I can undo that by my hand, but if I were to tighten it with with a screwdriver, it's not going to come out. It's not going to come undone. Okay, so there you go. There is a link below this video to the product brochure. That's super handy because it will allow you to review the FS452, which is going to be your high quality version of this. Uh, when it is in the brass base material, they can also do an aluminum base material as well. They can do that three hole in brass and aluminum. Then you've got the cast material in the two different sizes and the five different colors on page two. So made of brass or aluminum, four hole or three hole, four hole versions made of cast iron. There you go. Three base materials. Okay. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Ives products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. I'm partial to Ives and it's because I'm probably because I'm most familiar with their product line. I've been in, immersed in the Ives product line for a very long time and have most of the part numbers memorized, I think. Um, the name is synonymous and ubiquitous with good quality trim and auxiliary hardware and it's a well-known name within the industry and I'm not aware of anyone that would disqualify the use of Ives just on recognition of the name alone. I have no reason to suggest that you not use this product whatsoever and every reason to suggest that you consider it. If you have any questions on the Ives, FS544 in an SB28 which is just a sprayed aluminum finish or any other Ives product, please feel free to reach out to us and thank you.